What's up internet? Matt at Overkill Woodcraft and today I'm going to replace this temporary velcro tape I had holding the cover to my dust hood in place with some magnets that I was waiting on. These will allow for a more snug seal and they obviously won't get as crudded up with sawdust over time. However, because I used this thin quarter inch plywood um, for my material, I had to get a little creative with how I'm adding these magnets. So first thing I'm going to do is detach a bunch of double sided tape to it and make sure I clean off both surfaces that you know might have dust on them. Then I'm going to attach both of them back onto the hood so I can prepare to drill a very tiny pilot hole through the face of this cover and into the hood itself. I'll leave a link to these magnets below, but as you can see, they came in a pack of like 50. They're very tiny and they're very strong, so they'll be perfect for fitting inside of that thin cover, which again is only a quarter inch thick. Finding these tiny magnets was the downside of using a material this thin for the cover, but an upside is that instead of having to measure out perfectly spaced holes, on the inside of the cover and on the face of the hood itself, I can just drill tiny pilot holes through both. I just have to make sure that they're centered in that 3 quarter inch plywood that I used for the hood. That double sided tape is very strong though and as you'll soon see that quarter inch plywood isn't, it can snap easily so just be careful when removing it. So now I'm going to lay these down on their face and then from the other side use that pilot hole as a reference for this brad point bit. It didn't have a very long tip on the end of it. And I'm just going to kind of clean that hole up, put the magnet in there, make sure it's deep enough for the magnet, and then rinse and repeat on all of those pilot holes on the inside of the cover and then on the face of the hood. And now it's time to put some thick starbond into those holes and then try to hold the magnet in place as well as possible without actually pulling it out. For that I just used this tiny little file. It had a rubber cover over the end and it worked pretty well. Then I'm just going to do the same thing for the inside of the cover. But here I'm going to use some accelerator that will kind of speed up the process a little bit. And then I just take those magnets off. And I make sure it's in place by testing it with all of the magnets. And as you can see it's not going anywhere. Something that's probably harder to see is how cupped this cover was right in the middle. And that's important to note because off camera I tried to kind of bend it back in place because the magnets weren't adhering and that happened. So now you get a bonus round on how to fix that. Fortunately, it's pretty straightforward and hint, it involves a ton of Starbond. I just used medium, kind of filled it into all those, you know, end pieces where it had severed, wedged it right back into place, held it there for a little bit, and then cleaned it up with my chisel. And yes, I am aware my chisel game is weak. And for a touch of overkill, I decided to add this little support piece on the inside as well. Again, just a ton of star bonds, some accelerator, real easy stuff, and we're good as new. Now after placing on these covers, I'll run through a little demonstration of how this setup works. A lot of people have asked me in past videos why I don't just hook up a hose. Well, the hose doesn't really do a good job of containing the sawdust. Yes, it sucks up some of it, but my goal here is to use that PVC elbow I've attached and instead direct the sawdust into the hood. And from there, I have a 4-inch port at the bottom built into the miter station itself and that sucks up most of it. And this has worked really well for me, so I hope it helps you. For more woodworking tips and DIY builds, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.